fashion and beauty trends have come and gone. Some have been great, others maybe mm, not so much. Here's a quick look at some of the deadliest trends in history. And I mean this quite literally, they were deadly. Now we've all heard about the rib crushing corsets that women use to get thinner <gasps> waistlines. <gasps> Elizabeth, how's it coming? It's difficult to say. I'm told it's the latest fashion in London. Well, women in London must have learned not to breathe. But there are other trends that have taken the world by storm, despite being rather risky. In 1898, Marie and Pierre Curie made path-breaking discoveries with radioactive isotopes. And the world was just beginning to understand this new scientific wonder. By the early 1900s, without quite understanding the more harmful effects of such substances, products with acclaimed radioactive properties were commercially sold to make fantastic transformations to your looks. They began flying off the shelves. With cosmetic lines like Thoradia and Radior, you were promised glowing skin and great looks. Radium was a popular ingredient in many of the products, including toothpaste to make your teeth brighter and hair products to make your hair do glow in the dark. It was only when the harmful and cancerous effects of these substances were proven beyond a doubt decades later that these lethal products were taken off the shelves. Foot binding was a beauty custom practiced in China for centuries. It is said that the practice originated with a dancer in the 10th century named Yao Nia, who bound her feet in the shape of a new moon and entranced the Emperor Li Yu by dancing on her toes. It soon became a custom among many women in the land and it was considered a marker of beauty and pride in their culture for women to have petite feet and a small, delicate gait. Girls as young as 4 to 9 would wrap their feet in bandages and bend them to ensure that they fit into lotus shoes as they grew. The result would be lotus feet, misshapen feet with broken bones, risks of infection and a lot of pain throughout their lives just in order to meet the social norms of beauty. These were even a criteria when a woman was being considered as a proposal for marriage. This practice was finally banned in 1912. A trend that started with the ladies of the Venetian court in Italy and later spread to the rest of Europe was that of big, beautiful eyes. From the 16th century and well into the 19th century, European women adopted a lethal technique to get their eyes looking this attractive. They used eye drops made of belladonna, which caused their pupils to dilate. The name itself translates to beautiful lady in Italian, but it is also known as deadly nightshade. This is because the effects of belladonna poisoning can also include rapid heartbeat, distorted vision, delirium, vomiting, hallucinations and death due to respiratory failure. Dresses like these with crinolines were a fashion statement in the 19th century, but they were also a lethal fire hazard. Crinolines were petticoats made of large volumes of highly flammable fabrics draped on a hoop-like structure worn around the waist. This garment was so popular that magazines at the time dubbed it crinoline mania. They were worn at a time when there was no electricity, so obviously fires and gas lights were common. And if a woman happened to knock against a source of light, she would be engulfed in flames and burnt alive in no time at all, as the easily flammable dress would take too long to get out of. By some estimates, around 3,000 women at the time lost their lives this way. Those dresses also posed a risk of getting caught in the wagon wheels and when boarding trains. Men too were followers of some rather dangerous fashion trends. In the 19th century, the stiff collar was a common occurrence. It was a detachable collar so that men wouldn't have to change their shirts every day. These collars would be starched so stiff and worn so tight that they became dangerous and earned the nickname Father Killer. If a man happened to nod off to sleep while wearing one of these, the collar would be so tight that it would cut off the blood supply to the brain by restricting the carotid artery and would press down on the windpipe choking them to death. If green is your favorite color, there was a time in history when that could actually be fatal for you. Back in the day, colored clothes took a laborious process and were hard to come by. In 1775, a man by the name Carl Scheele developed a vibrant green dye called Scheele Green. 
the color became very popular as it was better than other dyes available at the time, despite the fact that it was synthesized in arsenic. Another popular dye at the time was Paris Green, which was also arsenic-based. Now, arsenic is in many forms a deadly toxic substance, especially when it comes in contact with our skin or is ingested in certain quantities. This arsenic-filled green dye was used on all kinds of garments and would cause chemical burns and open sores for the person wearing them. The arsenic would be then absorbed by the body through these wounds and could cause lethal arsenic poisoning. Trends come and go and this has been the case for centuries. But boy, are we glad that some of these have stayed in the past and are not likely to make a comeback anytime soon.